Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and another movie review and today I am very delighted to be talking to you guys about Monkey Man, co-written and directed by Dev Patel, starring Dev Patel. This follows a man who goes by Kid, who is essentially out on a revenge mission to seek retribution against the man who killed him his mother. Now, I've heard so much about this film uh, ever since Jordan Peele picked it up in his company Monkey Pop Productions and of course Universal picking up this movie in step with that and ever since I saw the trailer I was beyond pumped for this movie because I was like, damn, this looks like some insane action choreography going on here and, and of course you know I love Dev Patel and, and so I was really excited to see what he did you know stepping behind the camera for the very first time and just knowing the backstory to this film how Netflix was originally going to release it and it was shot during COVID and one thing after another kept happening and as you know things usually do on film sets and then Netflix dropping them and almost not having a release at all to only get picked up by one of the biggest studios in the industry thanks to Jordan Peele and essentially letting Dev Patel see his fullest dreams uh, you know realized to fruition is, is really an incredible story and one of filmmaking legend I, I feel because it's very unusual to see something like this happen on such a large scale uh, for something to fall so flat and then to you know kind of supersede that and, and reach even greater heights that perhaps the filmmaker and star didn't even think were possible but yet here we are uh, talking about Monkey Man which premiered in theaters this past weekend and of course I got a chance to see it and look I think Dev Patel what he does here is truly nothing short of extraordinary um, I think he has a strong career ahead of him as a director and yet again he has such a great visual style as a filmmaker because the thing I love about uh, Patel's directing here is just how much he's able to convey the story through visuals whether it be editing uh, whether it be a camera pan to kind of you know pay off a gag uh, yet again the way he utilizes visual humor to subvert expectations and to subvert tropes that we may know from the genre already really makes me feel like he definitely has a great uh, understanding of the cinematic medium but also in front of the camera as well this guy's absolutely terrific I think this is maybe his best role of all time after Lion which of course he was nominated for an Academy Award for best supporting actor but yet again he is so jacked in this movie <laughs> and it's so visceral the action which we will obviously talk about but there's a vulnerability to his performance that I feel like in a lot of movies like this you will not quite see and I absolutely love that he brings those sensibilities to the table here on top of the very very raw and intense and bloody and brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat which has to be the craziest I've seen <laughs> on screen in a long time which is saying a lot because we just got John Wick chapter 4 last year but I really do think that this is some of the most gruesome jaw-dropping mind-blowing choreography I've seen in such a long time and in that third act man that is when it truly skyrockets I was just unbelievably blown away by the action like squirming in my seat uh, s getting squeamish you know audibly gasping there's so much the action does well here yet again the way it's framed the way it's choreographed the great ideas that Dev Patel came up with storyboarding these fights he really gets very down and gritty in a way that feels very realistic and, and grimy in a way that you would not usually see in these types of movies but probably is something closer to the reality of the situation actually being there and I absolutely love this movie from an action standpoint it's definitely going to be one of the most standout movies you'll see in some time and the story itself too I mean look 
even though this is an action movie through and through in the vein of John Wick, of course they even make a reference to John Wick at one point in the movie, it is very much a story tackling so many weighty ideas about uh, corruption in India, the caste system. Uh, there's so many things he's trying to hit, and for the most part he touches on them in a way that are digestible and that you get to you know understand. And I really do love that about this movie, that it does try to take its time to develop its story. It, it doesn't, you know, just throw you into the action. It is more cerebral in, in some sort of sense. I'm not saying it's like 2001 A Space Odyssey. I'm not saying it's Pig or anything, you know what I mean? But in the way it moves about... Uh, the narrative, it does really take its time to establish this story. And a lot of that is done through flashbacks in some instances. And what I will say in regards to that, I think as many great things there are about this film, it is quite obvious that this is a directorial debut because some of the storytelling I think really could have been condensed in a lot of ways, especially uh, the stuff with the flashbacks, because there's only really a few that you need. And one of the scenes is one of the most disturbing and impactful in the entire movie, so you absolutely have to have that. But I think Dev Patel is, for one, you know, trying to tackle so many things here that sometimes he slightly uh, buckles under the weight of his own ambition, which is honestly respectable. This is a very, very ambitious film. And I think that's why it stands out in many ways. And one, this isn't just trying to be a straight-up action movie where he's going around killing people. He has something to say. He has something to comment on uh, when it comes to classism. And you can really see why people in India uh, would be upset about this, especially the hierarchy. Um, it, it is very obvious what uh, Dev is talking about in this movie. And, and I respect him for going for it. But yet again it sometimes suffers at the cost of some of these uh, character dynamics that are set up throughout the movie that I really would have liked to see uh, established even further. And speaking of the cast, I'm not going to get into everyone here because I probably can't pronounce many of their names, unfortunately, but I will mention a few. Pito Bash is this guy who kind of works at this hotel that Dev Patel's character infiltrates. He is really great, brings a great sense of comic relief, and their dynamic as well is truly... Uh, something that I do love about the movie, even though I think they could have wrapped up uh, his character a bit better than they did. And of course, Charlotte Copley in this as like the ring announcer, because of course, Monkey Man comes from, uh, well, of course, the Hanuman legend, which is a very big component of this film, but also the fact that he's kind of like this heel fighter for this, you know, kind of underground uh, wrestling that's going on in, in this area that he's in. And he is absolutely electric every second he's on screen, so it brings such a great energy and charisma uh, to being this very, you know, loud and boisterous uh, ringmaster who obviously is kind of a seedy character himself. And it's nice to see him in a movie. I uh, haven't seen him in something in a long time, especially something very good. Uh, so really happy to see him in here. But yeah, I mean, of course, Dev Patel is going to be the one you're going to uh, go away talking about. But yet again, this is a very, very stacked ensemble cast, many of which I feel could have been utilized better or are underwritten because one of my other big issues with this movie, it feels very two-dimensional in its approach to some some of the characters and the story itself. I wish that there could have been a deeper sense of character and in, in depth in, in that regard, but unfortunately, yet again, he's trying to hit so many things that not everything quite hits their mark, but they almost come close. And so I really think that there's so much to enjoy about this movie, like the action itself. And another criticism I will bring against this film, it seems like I'm bringing up a lot, but I really do enjoy this movie. I think the shaky cam is a bit too much uh, for a lot of this narrative, especially I think in the beginning, I feel like Dev Patel utilizes too many close-ups to the point where at some point you don't really get a scope of, of the scene you're looking at and it, it just feels a little bit uh, claustrophobic in a way that you aren't really uh, getting to envelop the entire frame. And I wish he had pulled out to some wides uh, more often in, in this film because I feel like it would have made the film breathe a bit more. And, and of course in some instances where it is supposed to be more claustrophobic, like I understand, but I really think we should get away from shaky cam uh, at this point in time. I, I thought this trend died a long time ago, but apparently not. 
and I understand, you know, under the circumstances, everything I had to go through, I had to shoot a few scenes on the iPhone. It's hardly noticeable, I will say that, despite some, some shaky cam work. I, I really think that, you know, he did the best with what he could. And this is the thing that I really admire about Dev Patel, because not only is he such a great talent, but he seems like such an incredible person. I don't know how you could not love Dev Patel. I heard he broke up a knife fight uh, between some man and woman on the street a while ago. And I just don't think any, you know, normal person does that. I think it says a lot about his character. And I think, yet again, his perseverance through this whole process, the fact that he literally poured blood, sweat, and tears into this movie to not only reinvent himself, in the way he is seen as an actor, uh, because I really think he is going to be an absolute action star after this. I cannot wait to see what he does. He could be in the vein of someone like Tom Cruise in the way he reinvented himself as an action star later in his career, or Keanu Reeves uh, for that matter. I really think Deb Patel's got the chops, and yet again, he's doing most of his stunts, and it's insanely impressive. But just the fact that he decided to make this movie, you know, he brought it to Neil Blumkamp, who told him, no, you should direct this. He brought it to his friend, who's the co-writer on the movie, he said, no, you need to write this with me. Like, you know this story intrinsically. And he essentially created a platform for himself to be able to represent an entire group of people who perhaps have not seen themselves on screen in that way before and in that capacity. And I just think it's absolutely incredible. Much kudos to Dev Patel. I love you, man. I think you're absolutely awesome. And I think what you're doing on so many levels is so impressive because this is really one of those very happy uh, occurrences in film where... Uh, everything seems like it's stacked against you, but it, you know, ends up being uh, much more for the benefit than you could have even imagined. And yes, I really cannot wait to see what Dev Patel does next, because Monkey Man is very, very much a promising debut. And you can see why someone like Jordan Peele, who essentially was seen as, you know, this comedic actor. Because I remember when I saw Get Out, I'm like, Jordan Peele's doing a horror movie? And now when you think of Jordan Peele, you think of his horror film. You think of him as a horror filmmaker. Uh, and I think something like that is truly incredible. I'm not saying the same exact thing will happen for Deb Patel, but yet again, it, there's this kinship between these two uh, that I think is very, very understood uh, between them. But I do think, even with that being said, Deb Patel really could establish himself as a prominent filmmaker that we'll be seeing over the next few years and the years to come. And I'm really excited to see what this guy does next. Uh, Really, I think Monkey Man is one hell of an action movie, especially for the third act. And even though he's taking uh, different elements from other movies and borrowing them, reappropriate them, like there's one part I'm like, oh, that's Enter the Dragon. And at one point I was like, oh, that's Green Book. Yes, I really mean that. <laughs> but regardless, whatever he was taking from these movies, he really does reinvent it in, in a new way that feels fresh in a way that you know, feels like we haven't quite seen it before, and I think his voice is, is certainly felt throughout the entirety of this movie. I think that this is just such an incredible passion project that has become fully realized in, in, a, in a lot of ways, and of course maybe not quite to the level I would have liked it to be, but this is one hell of an action movie, like I said. I'm going to give Monkey Man an 8 out of 10. Definitely check this one out in theaters. This is such a fun movie to see with a crowd because people are going to have their fists in the air. They're going to be making noises throughout uh, the entire movie, reacting uh, to the brutality taking place on screen and what have you. It, it's just such a fun ride and an absolute blast to watch. So yeah, guys, let me know what you thought about Monkey Man down in the comments below. Are you going to see it in theaters? You bet. And of course, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you like what I'm doing here. Uh, can't wait to talk about so many great movies coming out in the next few weeks. And of course, Civil War is one I'm insanely excited for. You know, definitely loved a couple of Alex Garland's past few films, and I can't wait to see what he does next in that, as well as many other uh, very interesting movies that we might be talking about soon. Uh, but to stay tuned uh, to see what those are. Uh, because, of course, when I put them up, you will know. 
And yeah, guys, until the next movie review, keep watching those movies, and I'll talk to you soon.